Hi, welcome back to Kanetan. Uh, in the, I am standing um, inside the state-of-the-art uh, facility, the Lassik Theatre of I Foundation, Coimbatore. And with me, we have our very own cornea and refractive surgery specialist, our doctor, Dr. Shrez. Welcome, Dr. Shrez. Thank you so much for having us over. So, um, I've been wanting to ask, uh, right now I'm wearing contact lenses. I've had to wear glasses from childhood and I really would want to get rid of these glasses or uh, using the stress and strain of carrying contact lenses. What are my options to remove glasses completely? So today there are multiple options available for correcting uh, refractive powers or glass powers to get rid of uh, glasses or contact lenses altogether. We have uh, basic uh, procedures called LASIK, we have something called SMILE, we have femtolasic, we have contouring LASIK and we have fakic intraocular lenses. Multitude of options which are available to treat any kind of refractive power in almost any patient. I've heard about all these options but what worries me, are they actually safe? Because I've heard uh, friends or uh, family members who've actually questioned me asking what's wrong in wearing glasses. Is it safe to go ahead and get a surgery done? It is, before I just dismiss the entire question by saying that it is exceedingly safe, there is a lot that goes into the preoperative screening of a patient before we decide that a candidate is suitable for refractive surgery. Refractive surgery or LASIK surgery is perhaps one of the safest procedures performed in the human body. But before we go on to perform this refractive surgery, there are a multitude of scans which are taken in a patient's eye before we decide that it is completely safe to do LASIK in that patient. We have devices like the Corvus, which looks at the strength of the cornea. We have the Pentacam HR, which gives us a three-dimensional view of the cornea, the front and the back of the cornea. We have the tear film analyzers, which look at the details of the tear film. And then finally, the topolyzer, which looks at the curvature of the cornea and gives us very intricate details about each portion of our cornea. By doing a variety of these scans, which I just alluded to, we can really pinpoint whether one, we are eligible for refractive surgery or what type of procedures we are eligible for it may be one or it may be a multiple options that we may be eligible for. But once we decide that we are eligible, the procedure is extremely safe and repeatable. Okay, so this would tell me if I can go ahead and get a surgery done. But what kind of surgeries or like mentioned, there are different types of LASIK procedures. Which one would be suitable for me? How do I get to know that? Certainly. So there are multiple options which are available. Just to give you a real-time feel of the various options that we have, let's just move inside our LASIK theatre and give you a real look of the options which are actually available. So, you have a lot of doubts about what Like said, if you have a lot of doubts about what you have done, if you have a lot of doubts about what you have done, if you have a lot of doubts about what you have done, if you have a lot of doubts about what you have done, if you have there are multiple scans tests done before. We have to do a surgery in the same way. We have to do a surgery in the same way. We have to do a surgery in the We have to make sure if it is safe and we can do this procedure in the same way, we can do all the details we can do in the same way. Welcome to the LASIK Theatre of the Eye Foundation. Welcome to the LASIK Theatre of the Eye Foundation. So as I go on to explain the types of how we do laser refractive surgery or LASIK, essentially what we are doing in LASIK is we are creating a flap in the cornea lifting the flap and doing laser on the bed to do the power correction. Now it all depends on how we do the flap because the flap is the most critical step of any refractive surgery. So when LASIK originally started and what is still being practiced even today is the use of what we call a microkeratome blade where this blade makes a horizontal pass on the patient's cornea to create a flap. 
The difficulty with the blade is when this is passing over the patient's cornea, our visibility of the patient's cornea is hindered and we don't really know how the flap is happening. So it's a relatively blind procedure making it a little less predictable and therefore a little less safe for the patient's eyes. To circumvent these difficulties came the advent of the femtolaser or the femtolasic machine. To circumvent the disadvantages of using a blade and the risks of using a blade came the advent of the femtosecond lasik machine. So today this microkeratome blade has been replaced by this femtosecond laser machine which is what we call as bladeless lasik which has made the procedure extremely safe and predictable. So this is the first time I am coming coming across uh, this actual uh, difference. So I've heard about the femto uh, second laser technology, but what makes it more safer? You've explained the blade part, but then other than that, what makes it more safer? So essentially, this femto second laser, which is a very sophisticated piece of equipment, it is enables us to create a flap of any depth at any location of any diameter that we decide and this can be customized from one patient to the other rather than a one size fits all blade we now have a femtosecond laser which can design the flap for each individual patient and truly customize the treatment for that patient so therefore by customizing the treatment and by making it more repeatable by using a laser instead of a blade we are now making the procedure completely foolproof and completely safe. We have seen the doctor explain how to use the technique of starting to use the blade and cut the flap and use the flap and use the flap and use the third layer and use the surface corrective surgery and the corrective procedure and the LASIK correction. But now we have better versions, better technology. That's why we are using the Femto Second Laser. This technology that we use is the precision and the accuracy. And this blade is used to slice and flap remove the time. The doctor is used to the view of the doctor. But when we use the laser, the doctor says that there is a complete clarity there. What is happening is that a doctor can correct it. And it's more safer and it's more to the advantage of the patient. Doctor, I've done my share of homework. So while I was looking for my options, I also heard about SMILE technology. Now how different is FEMTO and SMILE? So SMILE is the latest advancement or in the armamentarium of refractive surgery and this is the Zeiss Visumax machine which actually does the smile surgery. So how smile actually helps is we were talking about a flap being made in the cornea, the flap being lifted and then a laser being made on the bed and the flap being placed back. The smile is the truly flapless procedure where instead of a 320 degree semicircular cut that we do in LASIK, we just do a small 30 degree arc in SMILE. And that arc provides us the pocket where we have to remove the tissue already created by the laser. And the laser customizes the thickness of the tissue, the size of the tissue, the diameter of the tissue based on the power of the patient. And as soon as you remove that through that small 3 millimeter pocket, the vision is completely restored and the patient can see clearly the very next day and is extremely comfortable the very next morning. All this sounds interesting, but does this hurt? That's probably the most pertinent question which any patient would think of before they come in for a LASIK procedure. So let me just demonstrate to you how it works inside the theatre itself. Here we have a patient lying down on the bed and all we are doing here as you can see that once the patient is lying down, we use this joystick raise the bed, lower the laser machine onto the patient's eye. The patient is absolutely comfortable, awake and is lying down in a very relaxed, comfortable manner and all that he has to do is just keep looking at that laser. And within a matter of 22 seconds, the entire power correction is completed. There's a lot of noise that I've heard about uh, customizing your treatment for each patient. Um, it has not got anything to do with what we've been uh, talking till now. It's something different. What's that all about? So, 
Customizing treatment today for each patient, tailor making the treatment for each patient is really what we are moving towards. And we've taken a giant leap with the advent of this Contura LASIK. Now what Contura LASIK does is that it measures 22,000 points in the patient's own cornea and maps all the details of the patient's own cornea. So rather than just correcting the power which has been fed into the machine directly, which is what we were doing before, we now compute the power which we have calculated before the surgery, take in the data of each of these individual points that has been measured using the various scans that you saw and it is then fed into this machine. So those 22,000 points which have now been calculated, computed and transferred onto this machine based on which we are going to customize the treatment for each and every patient. It becomes extremely important when patients have cylindrical power or astigmatic power because this can be contributed by various layers within our own eye. The front of the cornea, the back of the cornea, the lens, all of these may work in different directions and contribute to the cylindrical power of the eye. This machine computes each of those directions, each of those vectors within our eye and then finally brings out the algorithm which is best suited and customized for each and every patient, making it the truly customized Contura LASIK. Words that for very high power, people who, who's got very high power, um, we cannot possibly do LASIK. Then what do we do? So it's not entirely true that we can't do LASIK for higher powers. The only problem is when it comes to very high powers, we may not have adequate corneal thickness available for doing laser procedures. And if we do high power corrections in thin corneas, the power has a tendency for coming back. So to prevent this problem, we have something called a phakic intraocular lens, where without doing any laser for the patient's eye, we can implant a very highly specialized and customized lens which is implanted directly inside the patient's eye. This can correct any kind of power and any variety of power and give us the same accuracy which we get with the modern day lasers. So we've seen all the options, we've seen all the types of LASIK that we can do. But do tell me, um, how soon can I get back to my normal routine after a LASIK surgery? Very next day. Very you, can next get, day. you can get back to your normal activities, normal work, sit in front of a computer, sit in front of a laptop, do all your normal activities the very next day. Most patients get a 100% quantity of vision almost the very next day. Minimal improvement in clarity, quality, crispness, contrast may happen over the first two or three days, but none of which will preclude you from doing the normal activities of our day-to-day -day life. You can go back to office, you can go back to work the very next morning after undergoing a laser procedure. Any pole, Canada which a lingal contact lenses use cheat, uh, or part of Buddhimutal and a boy in the Alkark or option on LASIK treatment. Other pala type under uh, starting a thought, Pandu thought or la technology opti LASIK starting blade use cheat, the Namla corrected chain the technology thought, Ipit the latest contour correction, customized cheat, correction chain patient in day, Avishatan uh, Anisarich, correction chain patta the technology where Namla ethic. Dr. Valare Bangi at the Namaka would explain to the Tarain Chidu. So please, this video use Cheya, end ingilum doubts, queries, questions, Ninga Kondangil, near it, younger doctor in Adatha, Chodikam, comment box, Chodikam, and we will be more than happy to answer you uh, with all these questions. Subscribe Cheya Tarangil on Dangil, subscribe Cheya for more such videos, information, and don't forget to uh, press the bell button. Thank you so much for watching Kaneta.